Good time. <laughs> All right, guys. In today's video, we're going to be installing a tack on the mini truck, but we're going to be doing it for under 10 bucks. And uh, this is the one we're going to be using. It's uh, an eBay item. It basically is a voltage uh, uh, voltmeter and also a tack. So if you just connect the uh, positive and negative wires, which are the, the red and black on here, you'll act as a, a voltmeter. But if you connect the signal wire to the yellow, it becomes a tack. And uh, the reason why I got this one, A, it's tiny. It's, uh, I would say, about two by one. Um, and I didn't want to have this big dial uh, gauge on my cluster or on my dashboard. Uh, I mean, it's not a Honda Civic. It's not a racing car. And um, I just wanted something to prevent me from like over revving or just trying to understand where, where I'm at on my revs. And uh, one of the reasons I got this one is because it has this little button in the back and it allows you to alternate between uh, one cylinder, three cylinder, four cylinder, six and eight. So um, we'll, we'll try to test it out. But the first thing we've got to do is get a signal uh, off of the coil um, and uh, get that uh, wire uh, routed up through the car up to the dashboard. All right, guys, so the first thing you're going to need to do is get access to the uh, ignition coil. Now, I already, um, you don't need to remove the coil, but I did to kind of figure out uh, which one was the signal wire. Uh, wire. Um, be, be very careful with not damaging this uh, coil. They're very expensive, but they basically mount up into the underside of the truck with these two uh, 10 millimeter bolts. And I'm going to show you where that is. Um, underneath but before I do that I just got to make you aware that that coil sits directly above the exhaust system and you can't really get access to it unless you remove the shroud uh, I don't think this is a heat shroud I think this is more of a shroud to protect the radiator and uh, basically the engine and uh, and exhaust and things like that it's almost like a, um, a brush guard and it mounts with four uh, 10 millimeter bolts on each side you can see here 10 millimeter bolts, two 10 millimeter bolts, and then there's also a, a 12 millimeter bolt that holds the brake line for the left and the right. Uh, and I'll show you that under here in a second. So here is the mounting point for the leaf spring, uh, the front mounting point, and you could see right above that. Um, there's these two, those are the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold that shroud in place. And then that 12 millimeter bolt holds this uh, brake line. It's a, it's almost like a hard line, but this just uh, secures it in place. And it's the exact same thing on the other side. And then you just gotta feed it out of the way over the drive shaft. And then this is the muffler here, or the catalytic I should say. Uh, and uh, the coil sits right above that. Um, and it mounts, let me show you here. Uh, let's see if I can see it from here. Yeah, here you go. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a mounting hole here and another one there. So there's like threaded holes in the chassis. Let's see if it focuses on here. And that's basically um, where the ignition coil mounts mounts up here so he, these are the connectors and I'm gonna explain the connectors in a second so when you look at the ignition coil this uh, obviously is the the wire that goes to the distributor and then there's two connectors a small one and a, and a larger one uh, the signal wire that we're gonna tap into is connected to the smaller plug uh, there's a blue wire and a black and yellow wire and the blue wire is the one that we're going to use to connect to the signal wire so we're going to have to splice into that wire um, and I did it about three inches before the wire gets to the plug uh, it, there's not a lot of uh, uh, extra space where you could splice into you kind of have to you have about five inches of uh, wire where you could uh, splice into all right guys I'm sorry it's hard to get a good shot in here but 
So I just want to show you the connectors. This is obviously the uh, ignition wire that goes to the uh, distributor. Uh, this is the small connector that we're going to splice into. And then there's this is the larger connector that we're going to uh, leave alone. And then there's also this little... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if this is a, a, a resistor or what it is, but it's one of the bolts that secures the coil, bolts this down. And um, I think it's somewhat of a tiny voltage regulator or something like that. So just make sure to not damage any of these because these are all hard to get and they're not cheap. So uh, I, I pulled back the insulation on there and hopefully you can see there's a blue wire and then a black with a red stripe. And I'm going to splice right into the blue wire. I already removed some of the insulation. So uh, that's going to be the next uh, on our to-do list. That's where I'm going to splice the wire. I'm going to feed the wire through the top here. And then there, there's where I plan on entering the cabin through. You can kind of see where that red and green wire are. Um, right there where they enter into the cabin part. Uh, I'm going to wedge this blue wire through there as well. Let me show you what that looks like from the inside. Alright, so you could see in there, that's that rubber grommet. So I'm going to come up through here, through the center console and up into the dashboard so for next step is to remove the seats i don't need to remove that one because that one flips up i'll remove the driver's seat so that i can remove the uh, the center uh, console Okay, I have removed all of the uh, center console components. I'm actually going to take advantage and um, when I had to remove the adhesive of the old cup holder, I also removed the, uh, the paint, so as you can see the gray here. So what I think I'm going to do is instead of having these be some black, some gray, I'm going to do them all in the uh, flock material. I think it'll look a little bit more high end. Um, the other thing is I could upholster these with some adhesive glue and maybe some of the uh, uh, leftover bright fabric, but I think it'll be too much uh, if I do it with the same material as the seats. So I think I might just do everything with the uh, flock material and uh, it'll be easy to do because they'll be out of the car. So I'm gonna leave those out for now, but I can now have all the access I need to feed the wire through this grommet on the side of the grommet here and I'm going to be using this green wire. So the next step is to just feed some wire down and then pull it through uh, to reach the coil. So I did buy um, some of this uh, electrical uh, wire. I guess you, it's just like wire management stuff. Um, this is for quarter inch ID. Um, you don't have to use this. I'm just using it because I want to make it look clean underneath the truck. Uh, and I'm also going to put some other wires with this. Uh, so I don't have all these multicolored wires when you look underneath the truck. And then I'm going to zip tie it with these little zip ties. But that's optional. Basically, uh, the green light comes out of there. It's already in the black uh, wire loom. It follows the chassis here, and it's zip tied to the existing wire loom. Goes back over there. This is the uh, handbrake cables. Feeds around, up behind the water pump. 
and then it goes down to the um, where the position where the uh, uh, coil is gonna go. So right now I have it hanging here. So I gotta do a solder this to the blue wire and then tuck it all away, put the coil back. So I, um, I got the uh, wire spliced in here. I covered it up with that uh, corrugated uh, sleeve. And I'm gonna feed it back up over the catalytic converter because that's where the uh, coil is gonna live. So everything's ready to go. So the next step is just to uh, get the coil back up there, plug it all up, mount it back up and uh, then we move inside the car to finish up the installation. Again, guys, I know it's uh, hard to see because uh, it's really hard to get a good uh, camera angle in here. But basically, the coil is there installed. Um, all the two the two plugs are connected, and then the plug for the distributor. And then this is the little capacitor thing that I was telling you about. You have to uh, secure it with one of the bolts. You just have to keep track of when you remove it, what it looks like, and then that's the other bolt. So it's all tucked up under there. Uh, now the only thing left to do is put our uh, heat shroud back on and then at least we'll be done with the part underneath the car. Okay, so now to complete the installation, we're gonna have to uh, route our uh, signal wire up to where we want to mount the uh, tack. And uh, I have decided to actually mount it up here. I didn't want to drill any holes on the dashboard. Uh, obviously, you guys could do whatever you want. What I did was I removed this little access panel here. I don't have the factory clock, so I figured that would be a good place to mount the uh, tack. And uh, you know, the tack is quite small, so. If you wanted to, you could actually like maybe make a hole in here as long as it doesn't interfere with these tabs and mount this thing in here because it is pretty tiny. Uh, however, um, I have access to a 3D printer so I actually designed this little housing here and uh, what uh, what's great about this housing is I was able to do it so it's angled towards the driver and it'll fit pretty much in the um, in the same spot and it'll kind of look uh, seamless or at least that's the plan so um, again I know you might not have access to a 3d printer so uh, you could have uh, uh, like I said this is a one by two inch rectangular hole you could pre pretty much mount it anywhere um, that you would like even in one of the vents if needed to but uh, again, next uh, step is to route the wiring. I've already fed a wire in there. Now this was just for uh, to try to get a uh, uh, just to see where this would end up, and it actually came right back out over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tape on uh, a positive, a negative, uh, lead wires as well as the signal wire, and then I'm going to pull 
this back up and I'll feed all the wires through and then it's just a matter of making the connections. All right, so we got the little tiny cluster installed. It's, uh, it fits a little loose, uh, so that's gonna vibrate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap some electrical tape around the tabs. I This was my first go at it. I drew that in 3D and I copied the dimensions from this, but I guess I wasn't aggressive enough with these bottom tabs. By the way, this bottom one was broken on mine, but um, so I'm gonna, just gonna wrap these bottom ones with electrical tape and that should give me my, it looks like it's like a 16th or so. Of allowance but in any case that's wired up now I just have to uh, take the three wires that come out of the dashboard uh, my source wire the green ones are already connected but I got to connect my ground and my positive and the positive wire is gonna need to go to an ignition sourced um, 12 volt so that it only turns on when you turn on the ignition the thing for me is I have it's gonna be very easy for me to find those because I used, I have installed previously this USB adapter or a charger, and uh, I already have a positive and a negative uh, source that I could tap into. So um, I had this mounted under here previously. Um, so all I'm gonna do is connect the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative, put some female spade connectors so that I could connect still onto here. So basically that's just gonna piggyback on these uh, positive and negative wires. And then we should be able to turn it on and see if we have it uh, working. Alright guys, now a moment of truth, uh, we're going to put the key to the first position and this acts as a voltmeter, so that says 12.0, that's actually a V, looks like a U, but it's V for volts, and then when you turn it to second position, make sure car is in neutral, okay, so Obviously, uh, it's a cold start, so the truck is going to have a high idle. And uh, let me just show you this part of it. I had to play with this because I couldn't figure it out. So when you uh, press this button here, it toggles. Um, so you hold the button down, and you see that? It says 006. That's actually, it's right now it's set up for a six cylinder engine. If I keep holding it, I could toggle to eight cylinder one cylinder engine, two cylinder engine, three cylinder engine, four cylinder engine, six cylinder engine. So what I've figured out uh, on my own here is that the three cylinder engine does not work with the Acti. You have to have it on the six cylinder mode and uh, now you just press it one more time. Well, Sorry, it has to be a long press. So let me go back to six. Long press, let go. No, that's not working. 
want for us. There you go. So, uh, the owner's manual says that for the manual uh, all-wheel drive that uh, our uh, idle should be around 1250 uh, to 1200 RPM. So this is a cold start. Right now it looks like it's reading around, uh, hovering about 2000 RPM. So we're gonna let it uh, warm up and then we'll come back and check what the RPM is at. All right guys, so uh, the idle has normalized. Nice, it's been running for about 10 minutes. So um, you can see the RPMs here. Now, obviously it's jumping between uh, 900 you know or very high 800s but let's call it 900 uh to a thousand okay so um i think that's kind of in line with these engines i'm going to just tap the uh, the accelerator which is a little bit hard because i'm on the passenger side but let's see here so if i hold a constant rpm about 3,000 RPM so you're not gonna get that stable um, reading that you get from a uh, analog gauge or, or uh, um, uh, something that's a water filled gauge just because those are designed to to operate smoothly but if you get a digital tack with a digital dial it'll jump around just as much because it's taking an electron electric signal and uh, and uh, creating an output from it. So the thing about this one is it cost, I think this was under 10 bucks, I think this cost seven and change or eight dollars and change. And uh, for some of you that are just looking to have a, a readout, uh, nothing that's showy or uh, you know race car like, this is uh, I think a good alternative and you can't go wrong with the price. So I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know if uh, how long this thing lasts if it craps out but it is a very flimsy piece uh, there's just a little tiny uh, circuit board here and a tiny plug the wires that come with it are super thin um, but other than that it, it, it does what it's supposed to do so I'm just gonna get it uh, back in there now I don't need to uh, you don't need to see that and uh, we'll call this uh, a done deal and again I'm not gonna cover up these um, the center console yet because I'm gonna refinish that make it look a little bit nicer all right guys I hope you found this video informative if you are planning on installing a tack in your truck you could follow the same procedure you could don't have to use the tack I used although I will put the link in the description for that one you could use a higher end tack you could use the the ones that go up on your dashboard if you like and um, the installation should be pretty much the same uh, there are people that find that uh, a source under the dashboard near the fuse box but I looked under there I tried to look at the back of the fuse box there were a multitude of blue wires there and I just didn't want to mess with it it was like a, a bird's nest of wires and I'm like I'm gonna screw something up this way I just go straight to that wire to the source at the coil and if I screw something up it'll be that one wire that I have to deal with um, also guys, it looks like only about 1% of you that watch these videos are actually subscribed. So if we could get that uh, subscriber count up, I would really appreciate it. And thanks again for watching. See you next time. Ryan Litzman. <laughs>